currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from federaljack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's live edition. It is the Sunday edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. It is January 27th, 2013. And today, I have a slew of topics that I am going to be covering. Well, I'm going to try to get into all of them. Uh, one of them is probably going to end up uh, causing me to uh, drag it out a little bit. And that is going to be the recent drills with the Army and uh, the Miami-Dade Police Department. And who knows uh, what other police agencies were involved because it's been kind of uh, kept quiet and hushed, hushed. And I'm going to play you a little bit of an audio from a local news clip, which is a local Fox affiliate. And, of course, I'm going to have to stop it and tear it apart and show you how... They're trying to make everything sound hunky-dory. But uh, this drill is uh, unlike the other ones that they've had in the past. And just in case people don't realize, this is not the first time they've had helicopters flying through downtown Miami. Uh, They've done this before. The last time they did it, it was Blackhawks and Little Birds, which is what they had this time. But the last time the Blackhawks uh, were landing teams... I think they were even doing the same thing with the Little Birds, and they were landing teams on the Bank of the uh, Bank of America building downtown, up on the the roof. Well, this time the Little Birds. And in case you don't know what a Little Bird is, ladies and gentlemen, I will explain to you what that is in a little bit. But uh, they're basically little small helicopter gunships, killer eggs, as they have the nickname. And uh, they're if you've ever seen um, Black Hawk Down. When uh, the Rangers are pinned down and the air support comes in and you see the the small black helicopters come in and they're strafing the streets and they're hitting all the militants up and down the streets, well, those are little birds. Uh, they're made for the United States Army only. Marine Corps doesn't use them, specifically the Army that uses those. Uh, and um, <clears throat> they were using Blackhawks, so it was definitely Army, probably uh, Special Forces. I'm sure at least Rangers, because they wouldn't have, uh, uh, you, they wouldn't, you just wouldn't be ripping around with little birds and stuff, uh, you know, the, the National Guard just randomly flying around downtown. So it was obviously some sort of special operations team. And uh, who knows what they were training for. All I know is they were shooting blanks over top of Miami. And I'm not making a sexual reference. I'm actually being... Uh, quite honest when I say that. They were literally firing rounds, but they were blanks. 
So you heard live gunfire. There was just no projectiles coming out other than whatever the paper wads that were in there inside the, the round. But there was no projectile per se uh, to coming out of the, uh, uh, the end of the barrel, a metal projectile like a, a bullet or, uh, of the sort. But they were firing for – well, I mean, they're not live rounds. They're blanks. But they were, they were firing uh, – they were really firing rounds off. Uh, just like in a movie, if you saw a helicopter during a, a movie a set scene and if it was doing a flyby and they were supposedly shooting something up and they had the, you know, the explosive charges rigged to make it look like bullets hitting the ground, like you see in the movies all the time. And you see the flashes and stuff coming from the helicopter. Well, those helicopters are shooting uh, blanks. Well, they did the same thing downtown in Miami. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you. That was a PSYOP, by the way, just so people understand. The reason they fired live rounds is see how they escalated every year. You know, first they, the first year they they flew them in, and I think this is actually the third time, if I remember correctly, because I think the time in 2011 was the second time. If I remember correctly, it was one time before it, but they didn't push it this far. Uh, the last time with the landing of the guys on the the roof of the Bank America of Bank of America building, that's like an escalation, right? Now they have uh, fire going on. At least auditory fire, not not live rounds coming out of the end of the 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 whatever they were firing from. It looked like the the little birds were doing the firing, so <clears throat> they probably had machine guns fixed to the uh, the pods on the side of the bird. But uh, uh, who knows? Uh, you know, and uh, you can. It, it wasn't like a minute long. I, I mean, the the video clip I saw it was only about ten or fifteen seconds. But that's all you need to put to scare the living crap out of people. This is psyop. They're escalating it. You know, it. Why would they do that? Well, that way, in the future, in, in whatever they have planned for, right, as I said, they're trying to push towards this violent escalation. They're trying to get people used to seeing military helicopters flying over their city and the the sound of gunfire coming from those helicopters. Because right now it's abnormal. The one guy you'll hear, he said, when the gunfire went off, he hit the deck. I mean, <laughs> is that not the definition of terrorism? But we'll get into that. Anyway, there's a few other things I want to uh, cover, too. Uh, but before I forget, I have to plug, and I might even have to spend a little time plugging this on the other side because I only got a few minutes before we go to break here. But uh, uh, I keep forgetting to plug all the new stuff I've done over at Federal Jack. And I have a bad habit of doing that because I, you know, I get right into the info. I'm all about the information. So I constantly focus on giving out info, and I sometimes forget to plug stuff. But I have been a busy little beaver behind the scenes over at federaljack.com. The archive section, if you want to listen to the broadcast now, uh, the older shows still, if you click on the older ones, they still go directly to the YouTube archive version. Uh, the newer ones are going to open up as a separate post on federaljack.com, and then in the post it'll have the same description that the YouTube video does. And uh, any of the same links that are in there. But it, it'll be a little bit uh, more user-friendly and easier for everybody to share, too. So there's the Twitter button up there on the page, the Facebook like button, all of that. And then you have the one link. Uh, and you can when you share the page, the player, there's an MP3 player now built right into the page. And it plays that specific show for that specific day only. So you don't have to worry about it going to a different broadcast or whatever. The only show it's going to play is that specific broadcast for whatever that that post is. Uh, and I'm doing that to to help make it easier for the listener. Uh, and I'm tired of driving traffic to YouTube because YouTube constantly does copyright strikes and hits everybody. So you're still going to have the option, by the way, of the YouTube version of the archive of the broadcast. I'm not getting rid of that. That's staying. The YouTube archive channel is definitely staying. In fact... On the post that you get taken to now, because each each broadcast I do it as a post, and it's got the player description and any relevant links and stuff in there. You know, if I have a guest on, any links to their websites or any, if they have a book or a movie or whatever, it's all in there. And at the, you can just go to the archive page, and it's the same thing. You just click on the the highlighted day, like so, say you want to look at um, like uh, when I had Doctor Pujo on uh, last Friday. So you just go, you you click on it, and it'll bring you to the page. And on that page is the description, any relevant links. 
uh, and the player itself to listen. But there's also a link. It says you can listen to the you or you know listen to listen to the broadcast on YouTube here or something to that effect. And if you click on it, it brings you right to the YouTube link if that's what you'd prefer. So basically, I'm just offering a secondary option uh, to listen, so you don't just have to go to YouTube. It, it, it you'll everything is right there on the site if you'd rather stay in the site. And also the de- uh, the archive section has a uh, downloadable link right below the description. So you have the banner, the description, and then right below it, it says, you know, click here to go to the downloadable page, and it works on uh, Android, Mac, you know, Apple iPhone, all that stuff. So check it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Gunships in Miami. Yeah, that's normal. All right, so when we went to break, I was quickly going over the different ways you can listen to the broadcast so one more time when you go to the website right federaljack.com on the right hand side you will see of course right at the top there in the upper right you'll see the the widget for uh it says down the rabbit hole with popeye and just for people that aren't sure if you don't know what a widget is it's an active the the picture up there is an active link it's like a button so if you go click on it It'll literally open up my Listen Live page, where the chat room is, the player is, and the different ways if you just want to listen to it on your real player stream or Windows Media or whatever. So that's all there. Now, below it, it says Listen Live. If you click that, it opens up the Flash Player, the Orion Talk Radio Flash Player, but in a pop-up window. So it opens it up in a separate window if you just want to listen to whatever. Say I'm not on, but maybe Joe and Tim are on, or Ken Hildebrand, or Ryan Brooks, or Ron and John over at Canada Live, or all, any of the other hosts that are on this network, right? Say you want to just listen to the stream. Maybe it's one of the rebroads, you know, scheduled rebroads. You just want to tune into the Orion stream and be able to do other things. You can click on that. It opens up the Orion pop-up player in a separate window. And then you can go on about your day and close that window out if need be or go search around uh, federaljack.com on articles, whatever. Underneath that, you'll see it says, Down the Rabbit Hole with Popeye, Radio Show Archives. It's got a picture of Morpheus' sunglasses. And you see him with the, the red and the blue pill. Okay, when you click on that, it'll open up my archive page. From that archive page, before you even get to the Radio Show Archives, you'll see... Uh, there's, it's a blue hyperlink. It's big. It says click here to go to the downloadable archive page. When you click that, it opens up the downloadable version of that archive page on whatever you're using. So if you're using a computer, an iPad, an iPhone, an Android phone, and it works on Androids and iPhones, I know because I tested both. So you can open up that page because it's a, it's a basic, like, bare-bones, like, 1995-style internet directory listing. I made it so bare-bones and simple so it would work with everything. I, I explained this on an earlier broadcast when I was talking about it. So I know it works. So go there on your iPhone if you want. A lot of people say, oh, Popeye, you're not on iTunes. No, I don't have a feed going to iTunes or anything right now. Uh, I don't know if I will. I mean, I have the downloadable page there, so I really don't need it. You can just go right to my server, and it's all free. So... If you're not sure, I'll give you at the link to the downloadable page. It's very simple to remember. I guarantee you it's, it's not easy to forget. I promise. You ready? It's really simple. In fact, get a pen and paper out, though, because I'm also going to give out a few other things. But the downloadable archive page is real simple. It's federaljack.com backslash Popeye. That simple. Federaljack.com backslash Popeye. Now, when you go there, it's not going to be you know listed you know 2011, 2012, 2013. It's going to be all January. So January, you know, from 2011, 2012, 2013, uh, say all the months, same thing. But it'll it'll all be there, and it's all labeled with a a, a brief description and the title. Uh, so. And if you listen to the broadcast, you'll obviously hear what it's about. But it, I, there's enough info there that you'll get a, a pretty good description as to, um, you know, what show, what, what the show is about. And it's got the date, 
So you, you can see, well, I wanted to listen to him from last Thursday, which was, or, you know, whatever, last Wednesday, which was, you know, the 16th. We had Gary Franchi on. Let's see. Whoop, whoop, there it is. January 16th, 2013. Boom. You hit it, and then it'll download the MP3, and you have the MP3, and it's yours for free. I'm not charging you. I have even edited out the commercials, and I made it 128K uh, CD quality audio. So it comes through nice and crystal clear. And you can hear everything that I'm talking about or any of my guests, what they have to say, uh, nice and crystal clear. So it's all there. It's all free. Go check it out. Uh, And again, when you go to the archive page itself, if you don't go to the download section, if you just want to, if you're on your PC or whatever, or even on your phone, you can do this because I've checked it. Say you, you, you go through the archive page or you notice, because I've, I post all my shows now as posts on Federal Jack. So it'll not only be in the archive section, but it shows up on the front page as a post. So if you click either one and end up on that page with the embedded MP3 player and all of that and all of the links and all that good stuff... Uh, all the older shows, by the way, are going to be going there. Everything. All the older stuff's going to be going over there. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have every, you know, post each of the older stuff with it. Um, but everything's linked back through each other. So you have that option to listen to. You can go to the archives. And on your phone, and I checked it on my Android phone. I have to check it on, uh, on an iPhone yet. But I know if you open up the post, like say you go to federaljack.com and you say, oh, look, Popeye posted his newest show. Uh, you know, as a regular post, I'll just click on it from there. Boom. Opens up the, the page, info, player, and everything is there. You click on the player, and it actually works. Now, it's a Flash player, so I don't know how it works. Uh, I don't know how it, it'll work with your Apple iPhone. I know it works on my iMac and everything else Apple I've tried it on purposely, but I haven't tried it on an iPhone yet. So if anybody wants to try, just open up, go to federaljack.com, open up one of my... Uh, uh, my shows that's already posted there, and see if the player opens up for you on your iPhone. And if it does, then there you go. You just have it's just one more way to listen to the broadcast. I'm trying to make it as easy as I possibly can for everybody to get the broadcast because I've gotten a lot of messages asking me, you know, I can't listen live. How can I get to your archives? And then somebody will say, oh well, you know, I don't like listening to YouTube because my internet connection is crap on my phone, so I have to wait till I get to work and use the Wi-Fi. Well, you don't have to do that now. Because if you're at home or you're at work and you have a Wi-Fi connection, you spend 10 minutes, you download whatever broadcast you want onto your phone into the MP3 player section because it'll just save it right there wherever it saves all your MP3s, right, and your audio. And then you play it from your phone or your iPod or whatever audio device, your MP3 player, uh, whenever, whenever you get the chance. You don't have to worry about Internet connection anymore. Uh, And that was one of my biggest things because a lot of people kept saying to me, you know, the only way... I can listen as because there was really no I didn't have a downloadable section set up yet. I was in the midst of creating it, but again, I'm doing this all on my own, and a lot of this stuff I'm learning as I'm doing this. I'm teaching myself all this stuff. I never went to school for web design or any of this stuff, so a lot of the stuff I have to you know ask my IT friends or ask other people that might have done it, and then you know you you kind of stumble over it and you have to it it's a self educational process to say the least. But that's why I, I'm taking my time too to make sure it works. Uh, with as much stuff. That's why I had to make it so simple. So now, to answer everybody's questions, there is multiple ways to listen to the broadcast. Through the website itself, as I've said, uh, you can still listen through the YouTube archives, or you can go right to the downloadable page, which is right from the server. No fees, no nothing, no third parties, none of this crap. You just go to... It. And again, um, I'm going to make... Eventually, I'll have a separate little widget on the, the page just for the downloadable page if you want to go there. But for right now, if you go to the regular archive page, you can either go that way or just go to federaljack.com backslash Popeye. Very easy. Federaljack.com backslash Popeye. That's the downloadable archive section. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me, contact DTRH at yahoo.com. The full word, contact D T R H at yahoo.com. And I'll answer any questions, but it, it should be pretty self explanatory once you see it. It's, it's not hard at all. Uh, I, I tried to make it as user friendly as I possibly could. That way, there's because I know how sometimes you know you might use Apple or you, you, and it might give a uh, 
an issue or some other product might give an issue because it doesn't maybe support this file or that file. I made it bare bones, very simple. It should be supported across the board without any issues. Okay? So, that being said, stay tuned for the, the download section coming soon with videos and, and audio and more. So, I'll advertise that when I get it up and running at 100% capacity. All right, we're going to break. Stay tuned. We get back. Gunships over Miami. That's right. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And during the break, actually coming right in right now, I just received confirmation in the chat room from one of the chatters. And I urge you, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening and you have the free time and you want to interact with myself or the listeners, and usually it's the listeners more than me because, no, I do not pay too much attention to the chat except maybe during the breaks because... If I did that, I would get distracted and I would train wreck my own broadcast, so I don't do that. But uh, <clears throat> if you leave notes and stuff in there, I will try to check in once in a while. But you can also interact with the other listeners. And one one of the listeners, uh, they're going under an anonymous name in the chat, uh, but they confirm that if you go to federaljack.com and you click on one of the the broadcasts I have posted as a, you know, when you see it on the front page, you just go right to the, the post that way. The embedded player in the post will play the MP3 on an iPhone. So I, I just was able to confirm that. Thank you, Anonymous Chatter. I appreciate you helping out. See, interact, uh, interactiveness with the... Um, with the, uh, the listeners, and I don't even know if interactiveness is a word. I'm sure I'm probably going to get bitched at for that, but whatever. Anyway, I want to get into this. Uh, the, the and military gunships, the Army helicopter gunships flying around downtown Miami. But don't worry, don't worry. It's just a drill for your own safety. Happening now in downtown Miami, Black Hawk choppers soaring through the night sky, but this is only a drill. My team's Mike Marza has some pictures for us explaining what's going on. Mike? Still, if you've seen one of these drills, it really is like a scene out of one of those action movies, choppers stalking the sky of downtown Miami and the like. Uh, let me show you what's happening right in the shadow of the Adrian Arch Center. Police right now have blocked off Biscayne Boulevard, but we believe that is largely because the Miami Heat game is about to be let out at the AAA, which is nearby. Uh, but actually, you know what, Nick, uh, if you take a look, swing back over here. This may be involved in this training or not. Again, let me tell you what all of this is that we know of. It and what he's referring to when he says this may be involved in the training, what you can't see is he's showing you a picture. He's on Biscayne Boulevard, okay, and, and they're not too far away from the American Airlines Arena uh, and, and the, the, the new re, rebuilt Performing Arts Center down there. And what happens is after a Miami Heat game, that area is very heavily congested, and they'll have officers out there doing uh, traffic, direction, whatever the hell you want to call it. But when they turn around... What they are videoing is, he is correct when he says, I think this is part of the drill, because what you are seeing is this uh, procession of police cars, mostly uh, Miami, uh, there's Miami City Police, and I'm I, the one, there's another branch, I can't see whose it is, it's kind of hard to make it out, but you can definitely tell there's also South Beach Police Department involved, which is Miami Beach Police. And this is downtown. This isn't Miami Beach, which is separate. That's actually, you know, the Barrier Island, which is connected via causeways, which is about a mile and a half east in the water. This is downtown Miami by the American Airlines Arena. Now, I ask you, what better of a time to conduct a drill like this, but during a time of mass confusion... When a heat game is letting out, people go, well, why the hell would they do that? Did there be traffic all over the place, blah, blah, blah? Maximum effect, first of all, of the psychological operation that this was. Because remember, it's to get people used to hearing gunfire above the city. What's the chance that you're going to have a, uh, a large amount of people downtown at night? Well, you'd have to have an event. And usually heat games bring a lot of local people from around not only not only Miami but all around the area Doral, Hialeah, all the way up into Broward County. So now you're you're getting a vast a variety group of people to converge in one area, the American Airlines Arena on Biscayne Boulevard in downtown Miami. And these drills just happen to be taking place in downtown Miami at the exact same time. 
Now tell me again that they weren't targeting those people as a almost a captive target audience, especially if you have the cops directing traffic and they close down a street and then everybody's just sitting there uh, in traffic and all of a sudden helicopter gunships come flying overhead, right? I would say that's a pretty captive audience. It's a joint military training exercise involving local police, also military. They're doing some training exercises partly to meet some of the requirements that they have to do, also to prepare for the military side for some overseas uh, drills, and also so they can make sure that all of their equipment is in check. And Nick, let's swing. First of all, that's the worst excuse I've ever heard given. So they can make sure all their equipment is in check. They have training ranges for that. Well, no, 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 Popeye, this is for an urban environment. Um, I have news for you. Do you think that they just started training for urban warfare like last week? And we don't have a training center yet, so we have to fly over a live city and scare the crap out of the citizens of the city. Come on. They have cities built out in the desert. People, go look up, go look up, um, I think, what is it, 29 Palms? I'll have to look it up during the break. I think it's 29 Palms is the, the one base out there where they test all the crap. Is anybody that's uh, ex-military, ex-army or Marines, uh, drop it in the chat or uh, hit me up on Twitter and let me know if I'm correct. But um, if I remember correctly, I think that's the name of the base. It's out in the middle of the desert. They do all sorts of training out there. They have cities built out there like towns where they do urban warfare. And they have urban warfare centers built at different bases around the United States. They actually got a chance to do urban warfare training in Iraq. I mean, Iraq was pretty much like a testing, uh, a, a live testing ground for a lot of things. They don't need to fly through downtown Miami with Blackhawks and Little Birds, scaring the living crap out of everybody. They don't need to do that. That's the worst excuse I've ever heard. They're training with the local police. They're not supposed to. That's violating posse comitatus. Good reporting there. Good reporting. And I don't want to hear anybody say, well, I went through boot camp a couple years ago. They didn't tell us that. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I went through boot camp after 9-11, not too long after 9-11, but after 9-11. And when I went through boot camp, it was about 10 years ago now. We were still taught posse comitatus. In fact, it was the first thing the drill instructors taught us. They said, do not think you are superheroes. Do not think that you are Johnny Law and you're going to run in there and protect everybody and help the police and get involved. There's such a thing called posse comitatus. It forbids us from getting involved in civilian law enforcement. It's not your job. That's not what you signed up for. If you wanted to be a civilian cop, you should have gone to college and been a civilian cop. You joined the Coast Guard. And they did the same thing to the Navy the Marines, the Air Force, and the Army. And I know because I have talked to Joe about it. I've talked to Ken about it. I know I've talked to even uh, Johnny English. He was in the Army. I've asked him about it. Same thing. I've asked all these people that are veterans whether or not they were taught posse comitatus back in the day. Every one of them remembers being taught at one point or another that you're not supposed to get involved in police affairs. That's the civilian's job. Now they talk about police and military training together like it's, oh, laissez-faire, oh, it's normal. No, it's not normal, unless maybe you're in like a third world country. Back around and show you this guy because we've been hearing some blades of choppers in the distance. Uh, people up on the balconies have been taking some video of this. Let's show you the first piece of video as someone shot some video of some of these choppers, military style choppers, flying over 395 in downtown. This was last night. They shot all of this video. Now, the sight is impressive, but just imagine if you could hear some of the activity that was happening here. Let's take a listen to the second piece of now, what, you, what you're seeing is this guy was in a, one of the high-rise buildings on Biscayne, and he's looking towards where 395, where you can get on 395, which is the causeway that goes to Miami Beach. He's looking out on that causeway, looking east, and you can see the Miami Herald building on the left-hand side. And there's Blackhawks flying between him and the Miami Herald building and around over 395 there. So they're, they're flying literally right over top of the area I just told you, where all of these people are sitting – at the American's airline, in the American Airlines arena, and, you know, coming and going to and from it. And they're literally flying these Black Hawk helicopters and little birds right over top of them at the same time and flying around the night before. People are just driving around randomly. You don't think that this was an ongoing psychological operation over the course of a few days? They're trying to normalize you seeing troops on the streets. Listen, 
Let's see if I let me check the clock before we go to break. Let me see if I got enough time. All right, we have like we only got a few seconds for the break comes up. So what I'll do when we come back in on the other side, I'll let you hear this. You're gonna hear the second piece. I'm gonna because I'm gonna play the rest of the audio from the news. But you're gonna hear the second piece where they they have a YouTube video. You're gonna hear them. You, this is when the little birds come in and they're only flying a couple hundred feet above. Uh, Biscayne and around the, the 395 area and they're almost it almost looks like they're strafing it if you watch what they're doing and you, you, you hear they're firing blanks watch that and then go watch the movie Black Hawk Down the ending part where they're coming in and strafing to help the rangers out pretty identical but it's just a drill don't worry about it it's for your own safety alright so is everybody ready to hear the gunships here you go little birds strafing downtown Miami, right around the American Airlines Arena, 395 Biscayne Boulevard uh, Junction. And listen to this, and you, you wonder why people got scared. Listen, and you'll hear the, you'll hear the guy who videotaped it say that he actually hit the deck because you know, they, they didn't know it was fake. They thought it was real shots. Listen to this. Video. Holy Now, I'm going to rewind it a, a couple seconds so you can hear that again, because they bleeped out when he Holy said, f- obviously, they bleeped out when he said shit. That's what he said. Uh, big deal. But they, they, they bleeped it out, so was- you can't hear. Uh, exi- it's hard to hear the gunshots. They're, you can look it up on uh, YouTube, and, and you'll hear the, the full gunfire. Uh, in fact, I, I think I actually have it. I'll see if, I, if it's fully downloaded yet, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll play the beginning of it. Uh, where you can just hear the gunfire, but I rewound it a little bit. Listen again. This is, you're watching, picture, he's looking from, you know, this building over downtown and this this causeway, this highway, and he sees little birds, gunships, two small army gunships flying in and firing. Can you imagine, not knowing that this was a drill, what you would think? Listen happening here. Let's take a listen to the second piece of video. Holy now, what would you do? All right, so some blank rounds of gunfire pinging off the high-rises here in downtown Miami. A photographer actually from Atlanta do I like how the reporter's like, yeah, so some blank rounds of gunfire pinging off the, uh, the high-rise buildings here in downtown Miami. As if it's normal for the Army to be flying over in helicopter gunships, little birds, go look them up, okay? I'm not kidding. Flying around in little birds, made by MD helicopters, the MH6 little bird, or the AH6, two variants, Made specifically for the army, and I'm sure that, I'm sure maybe the Marine Corps might actually. And who knows? The Marine Corps might use it, uh, in, you know, for their special operators. I don't know, but as far as I know, the main people that use it is main mainly it's made mainly for the United States Army. I'm sure there might be other units here or there that might use them because they are efficient, fast little gunships, especially for close in air support uh, of infantry units or special forces units and the such. It's pretty good for that. And you can do you know reconnaissance with it and stuff. And uh, again, you can light a target up real well with these things. So, um, you know, maybe the Marine Corps does use it, uh, but because uh, uh, I think the Navy might actually, or the, the Navy might fly them in in, uh, in uh, you know defense or ba- in um, what do you call it uh, backup or whatever frig you want to call it of the the Marine Corps. So the Navy might use it, but I know specifically that the Army uh, pretty much uses it for special operations. So why the frig are they flying a helicopter, two of them, two helicopter gunships with Blackhawks? And you can bet your bippy that the Blackhawks had door gunners because they wouldn't be flying around with smiley faces on the side of the helicopters, especially if they're firing off blanks from little birds flying around over Biscayne Boulevard and 395, which is the MacArthur Causeway. Now, I can tell you this is not normal. I've lived in South Florida for a very long time. I can tell you that the military flying around and strafing downtown with gunships is not a normal activity and something that you normally see on a normal basis down here. Uh, I was in the military, and I was stationed down here. And I can tell you, 
that we did not do that when I was down here. We trained in conjunction with like the Border Patrol and other federal agencies, but no way did we ever train with the local police departments to like in, in for cases like this. And you don't you don't see anybody you don't see regular units. What you don't see National Guard, which is what you'd expect, right? If they were if they were defending the training to defend the homeland, you would see National Guard. These are special forces. And where are they sending these special forces units that they have to train in downtown, strafing downtown, firing blank rounds from helicopter gunships above unsuspecting civilians' heads? Well, the police department sent out, you know, a memo to the, the newspapers and let people know that they were going to do this. Or they, well, did you get phone numbers of everybody that was there? All the people that maybe had just come into town like this photographer, obviously, you didn't get his phone number and notify him, right? You heard him say, I was scared. Listen, here, I'll play the, I'll play the audio because since I rewound it back, listen to what he has to say. Check it out. Doing some work here in the Brickell area, also in downtown, he had no idea what was happening, knew nothing of this drill, and that's what he saw. Listen to what he said. Helicopters came by, and I was filming up, taking some pictures, and then I just heard all this machine gun fire, and I hit the deck. I, I didn't know what to expect, and um, it was a lot, one of the loudest things I ever heard. Okay, so here within the past hour or so, we saw some official boats with some lights flashing. Uh, unclear on... Ex some official boats with some lights flashing. They're looking around the port. Well, obviously, it's either the Border Patrol Marine units or Miami Police Marine units or the Coast Guard, one of the three. That would be floating around there. It looks like um, it's either a Coast Guard or a Border Patrol boat. It's it's just a dark silhouette, so it's kind of hard to make out, but it looks like it's orange, and the Coast Guard boats are orange. It looks like one of the, the station Miami Beach boats. So they're just they're sitting there doing whatever. And, they, of course, they might be involved because they're stationed. They're the law enforcement, one of the law enforcement components of the Guard. So they might you know have them running around the bay doing whatever, chasing imaginary terrorists that are trying to you know kill civilians or whatever. This is all garbage. Special forces flying around downtown, and they're pulling triggers now. Last year, they were just flying around hopping off the birds. Now, they're actually pulling triggers. And it's just blanks, Popeye. What's the big deal? Because eventually, one day, it's not going to be blanks. Eventually, one day, it's going to be live fire, and that is what they're getting people acclimated to. The, the next step is to actually start shooting things. You don't you the, the 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 progressive steps that are being taken here. I mean, what you do is look, and they keep amp ramping it up every time they come out for a drill. So now that they fired blanks, what's next? Are they actually going to start chasing people? Maybe they'll step it up and chase down cars randomly, and have the special ops guys jump off the helo onto the roof of the car, and you know make the car come to a grinding halt. Or are they just going to start opening fire on people? Maybe they'll find somebody that they, they decided that is a threat, right? And that person will be targeted in the drill. Except it'll be a live fire drill next time. And then maybe, maybe coincidentally, the guy will be uh, planning a terrorist attack. And they, they just happen to be able to thwart it at the same time of having a drill. It's totally believable if, if it was written in Hollywood. I mean, people... This is not normal. Helicopter gunships, again, little birds flying around Miami, busting off blanks over c civilians' heads, not normal. That's a psychological operation. It's exactly what this whole thing was. Training. Pfft, training my ass. It was training the people, not the military. You guys were training the citizens, like Pavlov's dogs. Exactly where all of this is going down. We know it's in the greater Miami area, also Miami Dade County, but police being pretty vague about where exactly they're doing all of this and also for how long. They do say that public safety is their number one priority, so that's why you see a lot of this activity at night. And they want us to tell you that, again, it is just a military training exercise. But hey, if you happen to see some of this stuff going down, take some video. Uh, also, take some pictures and send it our way. Send it to 7 at WSVN.com. We want you to be safe while doing it. Live in downtown Miami, Mike Mars, 7 News. Okay. They're full of it that they're training specifically at night to ensure the safety of people. 
it's special operations units, okay? Most, time, most of the time that they do raids, go look at when they do raids with the special, special ops units, when they did them in Iraq and when they do them in Afghanistan right now. When are most of the raids done? Afghan civilians have complained about this, as Iraqi civilians did. When are most of the raids done? Does anybody know? Between the hours of 1 and 4 in that time frame. They usually start in around that time frame, between like 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning. Give or take, you know, how much time, whatever, you know, loading up, getting out there. But in around that time frame is usually when uh, a raid will be conducted or take place. Because it's the middle of the night, people are sleeping, you're off guard. That's what they're training for. They're training for attack runs at night. How can they be efficient at, at, during the daytime if they're training at night? This isn't for daytime training. Okay? People need to wake up. Helicopter pilots at night, they don't fly just looking out the window because it's dark. They could miss certain things. They usually fly with night vision on. So it's two different types of training. There's, there's night flying and there's day flying. Any basic pilot could tell you that. Any pilot that's been in the military that was a pilot in the military can tell you that. Most of these helo pilots wear night vision when they fly, if not all of them now. This isn't just your average training. This is a psychological operation to get people used to seeing gunships flying around. And seeing army special forces flying around. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Time to pay attention. It's getting serious. All right, hour one up, hour two coming up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with hour number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. It is the Sunday edition, January 27th, 2013. I am your host, Popeye from federaljack.com. I just updated the site today with uh, a ton of new articles, by the way. Uh, including some referencing uh, what I was talking about last hour with the gunships over Miami and uh, the audio uh, that I played. The video, the full video uh, that accompanies the audio is actually up there in in one of the articles. So if you uh, go and you click on it, you'll actually be able to see the video and you actually see the the little birds and the Blackhawks and everything flying around. But hey, that's normal. That's, that's That's what goes on here in Police State USSA. After uh, 9-11, because remember, we live in a post-9-11 world now, as we're always told. You know, before, before 9-11, it was pre-9-11 mentality, and now it's a post-9-11 mentality. So we're supposed to just change uh, the, the, our entire ways of life and get rid of our, our rights because of some imaginary phantom menace. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so in that vein, I want to talk about something else. Now, this was... <clears throat> brought to my attention last week, but uh, I had wanted to make sure I could confirm it before I talked about it. And um, I won't mention the person who told me about it, but they're a very reliable source. And they had mentioned to me that uh, they had uh, they had on good authority, we'll say, that um, TSA was training its TSA agents for a mass shooting drill at an airport. Now, at first I was like, well, that would be convenient if they were doing that, and uh, I didn't want to talk about it on air until I had uh, you know, something else, a secondary source of confirmation just so that in case I was wrong, you know, you know sometimes that happens. It's always better to be, you know, not put out shinfo. So the Washington Times has like a communities forum type uh, thing or communities section, I guess, whatever. And it's not really a forum, but it's like a community section. And in there, there was an article. There is an article, and I have most. I have a portion of it uh, up at federaljack.com with a link to the full article. But it's titled "Homeland Security Training TSA Workers for Mass Shootings at Airports." Now, that's the title. I have it under at Federal Jack. Uh, the title is it's, not, it's a little bit different uh, if you look it up under. Um, like if you Google it, I think the original title is TSA is training agents to save selves in mass shooting or something like that. But uh, I have it titled under fe- at federaljack.com. You can f- find it really easily there. Homeland Security training TSA workers for mass shootings at airports. Now, isn't this convenient? 
So, is an airport the next target of a false flag type event? Uh, you going to maybe perhaps to set up and used to push people over the edge because right now it's still an uphill battle for this uh, for the assault yeah, weapons but ban. But now everything's in place, right? And it's sitting on the the uh, the launcher, the assault weapons ban, and it looks like an uphill battle until another mass shooting happens and innocent people die and it's mass carnage and people are just completely pushed over the edge and then, foosh, that rocket takes right off. That's how fast that'll go. And it's, I find it very interesting that TSA is suddenly training for mass shootings at airports. Uh, when have we ever had a mass shooting at an airport in this country? If someone please tell me, because I can't remember one. So if someone would do me a favor and please, if you could, uh, one of the listeners, whoever, look that up and drop it in the chat or message me, email me again, contact DTRH at Yahoo.com. That's the full word, contact DTRH at Yahoo.com. Uh, if anybody can find where a mass shooting took place at an airport in the United States, I'm not talking about if it happened in Israel or Egypt or in the Middle East or something. I'm talking about here in the United States. I want to know if uh, – because I don't remember any – if anybody can find a, uh, a mass shooting that took place uh, at least within the past 20, 25 years at an airport because I, don't, I really don't remember any. Uh, you can't walk into an airport with a gun. You can't. So I don't understand uh, how they think that – I mean – let me rephrase that. You can you you can't just like walk in with you know uh, you, you walk around with it loaded strapped to you. If you're checking in, it has to be unloaded and everything in your uh, your carry on stuff, and then you have to declare it if you're traveling with it and blah 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 blah. But you you can't just walk in with like an AR-15 strapped to your back into the airport or you know a gun you know, strike you know four or five pistols strapped to you and in full riot gear. And and if this happens. Look, most airports now, at least like down here, if you go to the airports down here in, in Miami and in Broward, they have uh, up in Broward County, they have the Broward Sheriff's there. And in Miami-Dade, they have the Dade County Sheriff. They have them, they're the Dade County Police, whatever they call themselves now. Um, <clears throat> and the county police, they have them out, you know, parked outside and keeping an eye on the airport. So... There's and I, there might even be rental security there too, but there's police that are usually uh, or and or armed security that patrol the airports and they're right out front. So if some dude just walks in with an AR-15 or an AK, I have a feeling this time it'll probably be a semi-automatic shotgun just to push people over the edge with that because of Diane Feinstein's list. Things like the Saiga 12 are listed on there. Uh, which is a semi-automatic shotgun uh, based off of you know the AK-47 style frame. Uh, it's, it's same you know, functions pretty much the same way as an AK, except it shoots shotgun shells and you know 12 gauge shotgun rounds instead of uh, 7.62. So, and you can uh, it's magazine fed and you can get drums for it and it's just a really awesome weapon. And of course they want to ban it because oh my god it's an assault style weapon and it's going to kill people and that they haven't been used in any any of the shootings unless you include the strangeness of the gun being removed from uh, the trunk and the fact that it didn't look like an AR and it looked like a Saiga. But, but uh, besides that whole the strangeness with this past shooting up at the Sandy Hook Elementary School. I don't remember semi-automatic shotguns being used, uh, except maybe in Columbine. I know it was pistols and shotguns used, but I haven't heard of shotguns being used in mass shootings as of late. It's it's always been conveniently the AR-15, the, the assault the, the, the assault type weapon choice of psychos, as the news would love to put in your face. These disturbed young men love to use this weapon. So if they love to use pencils and pens, would be banned pencils and pens, idiots. Or if they decided to use cars instead, would we ban cars or any types of automotive transportation? But I digress. Anyway, TSA is being trained for mass shootings. And do you know what they're being trained to do if a mass shooting event happens? Which, if again, if one happens, I'll tell you right now. Um, I, I think they're going to stage another f mass shooting within, we'll say, it's January. I'll say by summertime, July the latest. And that's 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 giving it a long time. I'll say by July the latest, there's another mass shooting in in, in the country somewhere. And I don't want I don't want to say it's going to be a copycat shooting. I, I have a feeling that the next one's going to be something ramped up, uh, totally contrived. Uh, I'll say it now, uh, and, and you know, be going to be used to push for total gun bans and registration and confiscation and everything else. 
and, and people need to get out there because there's this huge appeal to emotion, and we need to we need to counter that with some logic. But here you have TSA training for mass shooting at an airport, and how convenient! Just as they're getting rid of the body scanners, well. Couldn't you see them saying, okay, we're going to back down on the body scanners, right? And they back down on the body scanners. And just as they get rid of them, as soon as they get rid of them, somebody will somehow, some shooter will get in there and kill mass amounts of people in the security check line, right, at an airport. And suddenly they'll say, you see, you busted our balls about our security pat downs and about the, the naked x-ray scanners. Now we need even more. So not only will you get the pat downs even worse, more invasive, probably a proctological exam because I don't that's but that's about the next step of invasiveness right so they'll, now they'll just give you a proctological exam before you get on the plane and they're gonna also be able to have the scanners and whatever other technology they have sitting around waiting that they can bring in and say well you see we need to ramp up our security state because look what happened a mass shooter gone in and they'll also use it to ban guns so it would be a two-headed uh, or two-pronged attack and as I said before, they don't, uh, they don't attack on one level. They always attack on multiple levels, right? They always benefit more than one way from this. And what better way to benefit than having one of these mass shootings at an airport like this? Buy guns. Buy travel. Watch TSA come to the roadway next. That's what they're doing very slowly. Slow, small increments, people. Frogs in the pot. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. All right. So I want to concentrate on this TSA mass shooting thing for a few more minutes. I'm going to read you a little bit of the article from the, the article I have up at uh, federaljack.com, again, titled Homeland Security Training TSA Workers for Mass Shootings at Airports. And then it links back to the it, – it's got a good portion – a uh, good-sized chunk of the article, but it's got a link to the, the full article, which I urge you to go read. And remember, I had Kurt Haskell on on Friday, and he tur- he talked about the underwear bombing and what he witnessed and how that was a false flag event. Well, he's actually mentioned uh, in this article, and the false the uh, false flag case that the underwear bombing was uh, is brought up and mentioned in this too. And I was actually surprised to even see this on the Washington Times, but you know, in the little community section, I was still surprised to even see this up there mentioning things like this. But here's the article. <clears throat> Transportation Security Administration checkpoint screeners are receiving training to prepare them for the possibility of a mass shooting at one of the agency's airport checkpoints. And those TSA personnel are being instructed to save themselves should a shooting occur. Gee, thanks. So they're being instructed to run like a bunch of bitches and not try to save anybody. So how are you protecting anybody from terror? How is you groping a 12-year-old protecting anybody if something happens you're trained to run away like a little girl so then how is groping anybody going to do anything what happens if you go to grope somebody and they pull out a gun you see you see how they're setting it up for checkpoints easy targets because people can't run they're going to be queued up in a line yep i swear i see them setting something up and i i hope i'm wrong i really do and I hope between now and January, uh, January, listen to me, I hope between now, which is January, and July, uh, nothing happens. But I really have a feeling that they're going to do something to help try to push this assault weapons ban and then even further gun confiscation and everything. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when they took the semi-autos away in Australia, remember they said, oh, we're going to leave the bolt actions. We have no reason to take away bolt actions. There's no reason to get rid of them. Don't worry. We're never going to come after your bolt action rifles. Go Google it. Australia is trying to take away the bolt action rifles now. You think I'm kidding? Go look it up. The Australian government's going after gun owners now who have bolt action rifles. They want to ban them. Incrementalization. You see how they do it in increments? They slowly turn the water up in the pot. If they turned it up too fast, people would jump out. The drill in Miami, same thing. Now they're, they're firing blanks. Last year they didn't do that. Now they've stepped it up a notch. Same thing, look at Australia. First they ban semi-autos, you know, they take people's pistols, they take, you know, they rifles, whatever. But we don't want your, we don't want your bolt-action rifles. We're not going to come after your regular hunting rifles. You, we're, it's not your freedom to hunt. Where, where have I heard that before? Hmm. We don't want your bolt-action rifles. We just want your semi-autos. Now, now, 
they want their bolt action rifles. And by the way, you've heard me play the audio before where the Australians, it's insane. They have to keep like the rifle in one place, the bolt in another place. And separated, so that way if something if someone breaks in, he has to go get the rifle, the bolt, put it together, get the ammunition in another spot, put it together, and then hopefully be able to defend himself before the guy has killed everybody in his house, including him. And now, now they want to take away the bolt actions. But they're not going to do that. Come on, Popeye, you're being crazy. No one's trying to talk about taking away the Second Amendment. Stop it. Yeah. Right. They do it in increments, and if they take away the semi-autos, then you're not going to be able to defend yourselves when they come to get the bolt actions. You get it? The semi-autos at least keep us on somewhat of a level playing field. You take that away, and it's over. And by the way, semi-autos are over a 100-year-old technology, okay? Over a 100 years old. But the mainstream media would have you believe that semi-auto means, oh my God, he's got a semi-auto gun. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Semi-auto. One squeeze of the trigger, one shot. Boom. 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 That's semi-auto. And if someone pulls off some sort of shooting at a security checkpoint and they have a fully automatic weapon... Uh, okay, that's question number one. Two, even if they have a semi-automatic, if they if they walk in with an AR or a, you know, a a, a, a Saiga, and if you look up what a Saiga is, you'll see it's big. Okay, there's no, uh, you're not masking that thing unless you're wearing a a huge trench coat, and obviously that ought to look shady to the cops and security outside who are keeping an eye on things, right, and who are milling around in the front there, because they're there are they are there, so that ought to look a little odd to them. Maybe to the people watching the cameras that are all over the place. That, that, that ought to look a little odd. Someone walking in looked like, you know, dressed like the Terminator. Yeah, there might be a problem. So if somebody just walks into an airport with an AR-15 or shotgun and starts mowing people down, I, I'm going to call it right now. I, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if they, oh, he was beaten as a child, molested, whatever. I don't care. It's a setup. I'll say it right now because this is too coincidental that they happen to be training. And I love the fact that their training is to, quote, unquote, help yourselves. Don't bother to help anybody else. Then what's the point of us paying for the TSA personnel to be there? Obviously, it's security theater because they don't have any type of weapons or any training to defend themselves, right? How about training them to disarm the guy? So if he pulls out a gun, you can react quickly and disarm him. And take the scumbag down. How about that? Oh, nope. Run away. So that way the madman is free to take out as many people as he can. And that way the victim count, the body count, is sure to be as high as they can possibly get it. To push for tighter restrictions on guns. Because after all, if they take away the guns, murders will just miraculously stop. Oh, wait a minute. They thought that was going to happen in Australia. And look what happened. Actually, gun crime went up. And not only did that go up, but you know what else went up? Rape, home invasion, strangulation, people being beaten to death. So that's great. Instead of getting shot from 30 or 40 feet away and dying of a gunshot wound, now you get beaten to death. Or perhaps you get some sick bastard that decides to suffocate you with a plastic bag instead. Or maybe choke you to death with a belt. Or whatever other friggin' means that they might use. A piece of rope. Well, I mean, are we going to ban clothing and, and, and rope and any, any type of line that's out there? Uh, I, we should ban hammers because people can get hit with that. Baseball bats. I, I, the list could go on. What about frying pans? I guess you could beat somebody to death with a frying pan. So cast iron pans, they got to go. Steel pans, they got to go. Um, I don't know how you're going to be able to cook your food now because th- th- you can, you know, I guess we'll have to microwave everything in plastic BPA-filled containers because, um, you know, you, you, steel and stuff can't be in your house. Cast iron can't be in your house. You could hurt somebody with it. We have to ban that. Scissors? Nope. Got to go. Got to go. The only thing you can use are those old school plastic scissors that don't cut shit, the ones from like third grade. You know what I'm talking about? The, the horrible ones that don't cut anything. Yeah, those. Those are the only things you're going to be allowed to use. Can't. Can't use any pens, pencils. They have sharp tips. Are you crazy? You can't have that around somebody. Somebody could stab you. And when I was in school, I got I got into a fight. I had a kid stab me with a lead-filled pencil. 
I had to dig the lead out with a knife out of my arm. I had to cut my arm around where I got stabbed to dig the, the tip of the pencil out. So I guess that's an assault pencil, so that means that we should ban pencils. All number two pencils need to be banned. I guess that means that Scantron tests need to be banned, too, because Scantron tests, you see, they enable number two pencils. You see how it works? You see how the slope just gets really slippery and goes down into bizarro, insano world? Right? I mean, you could say that Scantron tests enable number two pencils. Therefore, if someone was stabbed with a number two pencil, I could try to conceivably connect it to a Scantron test and say that Scantron tests should be banned. That way, there will be no need for number two pencils, and the number two pencils in particular will not be used in fights and to stab people. Right? Oh, but wait a minute. They might use a, another type of pencil of whatever other number. Well, then... That begs to be seen, though, because the only pencils I've seen that have stabbed people have been those special number two assault pencils that they use on the Scantron tests. So everything's got to be banned. Actually, banning those Scantron tests in uh, education, as we know today, might not be such a bad idea. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the last two segments here, uh, there's a few other things I want to cover. So uh, remember what I said. Keep a close eye on this TSA mass shooting drill and all this other stuff and the training that they're going through, whatever. And, uh, you know, them being trained just in general for mass shootings at, um, at airports, at se- it seems really shady. And any mass shooting in general between now and July, I'm going to say, is a contrived farce and done uh, by the powers that shouldn't be to help push their gun control agenda. That's not being a conspiracy theorist. That's being a critical thinker based on the things that they've done in the past and that we can prove that they've done in the past, which are, have been proven that they've done in the past. Okay, so end of story. Um, moving on, there's a few other things I want to cover. One of them is a California family is unable to rebuild their home after a fire because of FEMA regulations. Okay, that's right. I, uh, what was it? Uh, last August, I believe it was probably, uh, probably uh, I guess 2000. It was either 2011 or August 2012. Well, probably if it's last August, it's probably August of 2012. So I guess this past summer when they, they had a lot of wildfires out there in California, they lost their house. And they want to rebuild their home. And uh, because of the, uh, the, the, vari- the, the new rules that uh, FEMA put in, and I don't remember. The, you'll hear them talk about it. I got some audio. And you'll actually hear the family talk about it. But... Uh, because of the rules that they put in and these stupid regulations, now these people, it's, it's impossible pretty much. It, it, you know, it's a backdoor way of getting people to not rebuild and get out of the area because the, the regulations that they want you to follow to rebuild are just so insane that nobody in their right mind would even do it or, and or be able to spend the money and afford to be able to do it. And they do that on purpose. Again, frogs in a pot, incrementalization very slowly. Here you go. This poor California blah, California family who's not allowed to rebuild their home after a fire, even though they have insurance and everything else, FEMA won't let them rebuild their home unless they follow with the retarded regulations that you're going to hear. And obviously, they can't afford to. Here you go. My first thought, honestly, because um, my husband was off that day and, and we were all driving home, is that, oh my God, my house is on fire. And then I immediately thought, because the kids were in, in their car seats in the back seat, that's okay, we're all safe. The kids are here, we're safe, it's okay. To me, you know, it was just a fire, it can all be replaced. On August 24th, 2012, in the Natomas community of Sacramento, the home of Brad and Jennifer Taylor and their two children was destroyed by fire. Okay, so it might not have even been part of a wildfire. It might just have been a regular house fire, which is even worse because that, that happens. So you have a regular house fire, and then we'll see. But it, it has, it's not really about the fire. It's about their rules for flooding, which is really stupid. Just listen to this. It, 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 you'll hear it. Listen. So this is our home. the fire damaged everything in here the front bathroom with our baby toilet seat on it you're so raw after it and realizing how much you lost and uh sorry 
and the things that can ever be replaced. Little did the Taylors know that their problems were just beginning. So the fire happened on, on Friday and the following Thursday, the insurance adjuster came out with some contractors to do a walkthrough and, and work up bids on what it would be to repair the damage. And during that process, one of the contractors mentioned about um, possibly having to elevate the house in order to rebuild it because we lived in Natomas. As the Taylors found out, due to FEMA regulations implemented in 2008, they would have to raise the habitable part of their home 20 feet in order to rebuild. There were over 35,000 homes in that area and never were elevated over 20 feet in the air. Um, and so to tell someone that that's what they have to do to fix their home, which isn't covered by insurance, is ridiculous. Yeah, it would look strange and folks have considered this requirement to be a, a de facto moratorium is, is what you've probably heard because uh, not many folks want to build up 20 feet. When the Taylor meaning a de facto moratorium on rebuilding a home if there was ever damage due to fire or anything like that because like he said who's going to want to build their home 20 feet up you know how much extra money that's going to cost to raise a uh, dwelling 20 feet off the ground there's bought their home in 1998 they thought they were making a safe investment FEMA had uh, just certified the levees for a hundred years um, in 98 and so we felt safe purchasing here. They removed the requirement for mandatory flood insurance at the time and uh, we thought it was going to be a starter house and 14 years later we were still in it. Before 2008, the Natomas Basin was in an X zone, which allowed regular development, allowed regular reconstruction of homes. And prior to 2008, when Katrina happened, there was a heightened awareness to flood-prone areas. So the federal government reassessed different levees, and subsequently, the Sacramento levees were decertified, and the area was redesignated as an, as an AE zone. So we were told by our mortgage company, we were told by FEMA that we had to get flood insurance, but that was pretty much all that we were told. What the Taylors weren't told is that homes destroyed by fire in AE zones can only be rebuilt if they're raised to the base flood elevation, which for the Taylors means 20 feet. Otherwise, new building and renovations costing more than 50% of the value of the structure are prohibited. The city has on record that our home is just the structure alone, that our home is worth $71,000. So according to them, we couldn't spend more than $35,000 to fix our home. The estimates to repair our home are about 190000 or more. Hoping to find a solution to their dilemma, the Taylors attempted to contact FEMA. I called the regional office many, many times. I had written to the regional office many times, trying to even find a phone number. To contact anyone in FEMA is very, very difficult, I have discovered. We don't have the authority to make land use decisions for a community. The city of Sacramento normally does have the authority to make land use decisions, but in this instance, they're constrained by FEMA regulations. The city could provide a variance, but they're again caught by our guidance. The, the federal regulations require that in order for us to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program and receive aid if a flood were to happen, we have to abide by the rules. Those federal rules have placed the Taylor family in an unenviable situation. We can, cannot use the property, we can't rebuild, we can't sell it. You know, because it's useless to anybody, we still have to pay for flood insurance on that property. Um, and we're also paying a mortgage on the property. The mortgage company suggested that we walk away from the loan. Um, neither one of us are okay with that. We believe if you have a responsibility, you should fulfill that responsibility, regardless of the circumstances. I mean, it, it's unpleasant, but th that's the way life is. And it's not um, the mortgage company's fault any more than it is ours. Probably the best long-term solution, to say it that way, is for Congress to provide the Corps of Engineers the money to fix the levees. Unfortunately for the Taylors, FEMA's long-term solution won't fix their real-time problem. So for now, the Taylors must pin their hopes on Congress, carving out an exemption that will finally free them from their bureaucratic limbo.
Doris Matsui's office has, has been very helpful. Congresswoman Matsui has actually introduced a, um, uh, some legislation to help change things. If passed, the Fire Damaged Home Rebuilding Act of 2012 would give FEMA the authority to grant families like the Taylors a variance that would allow them to rebuild their home. They got this bill written very, very quickly. Um, you know, so they're trying to do what they can. However, you know, even a, a congresswoman has limited power. And, you know, really it's the constituents that have to put pressure on their representatives to try to get something like this changed. I've stuck flyers under windshields. We hand, we've stand, stood in front of grocery stores handing out flyers. Actually, the two days before Thanksgiving, because um, they were the busiest shopping days, we went out to the local grocery stores and were handing out flyers for hours and hours and hours. Uh, if I were in the same situation, I would want to blame someone, uh, quite honestly. Um, and it's easy to blame government. Okay. All right, we're going to break. That's an easy excuse. That's the FEMA coordinator you heard. Oh, it's easy to blame government. I mean, well, it's your bureaucratic BS that is causing the problem. Ridiculous. Raise your home 20 feet. The FEMA helps people, right? Besides building camps, they also build a bureaucratic web of crap that you get stuck in. Well done, FEMA. We'll right back. Ladies and gentlemen, final segment for today's broadcast, but do not despair. I will be back live tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you tune in. And stay tuned in for the rest of the evening, because after me, you have the Freedom Link radio broadcast. Today's Sunday, so that means it's Conspiracy Chronicles night. And then after the Freedom Link signs off for the evening, you have my buddy, the curmudgeon, the marine... The one, the only, Mr. Kenneth Hildebrand. So make sure you tune in and listen to his broadcast as well. <clears throat> Another at least four hours of good radio here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. All right. Final segment, I'm going to squeeze two things in here. One, I want you guys, because I, 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 I try to highlight whenever I can, a good, positive gun story to prove that there are more positive gun stories than negatives. Okay. And how guns <clears throat> can be used to save people. Then I want to talk about Sylvester Stallone for a minute and his epic hypocrisy. And you'll see why in a second. But first, a feel-good story about guns. Since you hear so many times how bad guns are, let's listen to a story where two armed strangers rescued a man who was robbed at gunpoint. The guy who was robbed doesn't believe in guns, but he was rescued by two guys who do have guns. Listen to this. Check it out. Complete strangers come to the rescue when a man is robbed at gunpoint. Now this victim wants to thank the Good Samaritans with a gun. This happened late last night near Herman Park. The victim was leaving a bar when a gunman in a ski mask approached him. Our Drew Caritas is live with that story. Drew? Well, Greg, Lisa, police believe the criminal who was canvassing this neighborhood had no idea what he was in for when he picked his target. The victim in this case had just walked back to his car. It was parked here in this residential area. He was actually coming from a bar around the corner called the Sugar Hill Club. Kevin Dorsey says he hadn't even closed his car door last night around 8.30 p.m. That's when a man wearing all black and a ski mask put a gun to his chest, taking his wallet, cell phone, and car keys. After he had been robbed, Dorsey began running down the street, and he says two men in a Mercedes asked him what had happened. He told them, and they not only caught up with the suspect, but started shooting at him. The suspect fired back, but in the end, the two witnesses turned vigilantes one and took down the bad guy. I don't believe in guns. I don't own a gun. So, you know, I'm totally at the mercy of my savior. So he obviously sent two angels to help me. And that's what I truly believe is that, you know, these people protect me when I couldn't protect myself. After he had been shot, we're told this criminal jumped over this fence, but he picked the wrong yard, one with a big dog in it. The German Shepherd began attacking the suspect, which helped prevent him from leaving. The suspect, identified as Christopher Hutchins, is being treated over at Ben Top Hospital. Police expect he will make a full recovery. For now, we're live in Southeast Houston. Drew Caritas, KHOU 11 News. You hear how there's no charges against the guys that defended the guy that was robbed at gunpoint and went after the guy, right? They engaged him. They exchanged fire. He was hit. 
And then he runs off and gets attacked by a German shepherd. Oh, you see what happens when you're a douchebag, ladies and gentlemen? Karma's a bitch. <laughs> uh, well, so there's your feel-good story for the day. Okay, the hypocrisy of Sylvester Stallone. Interestingly enough, I have that very title posted on federaljack.com. Click there. It'll bring you to the article. Uh, <clears throat> again, there's just a blurb. I wanted to link back to the original. Uh, I try not to – I post a lot of full articles in full because I do use the website as a um, an archive. But I try if it's a, a small blog or something or a website like mine, I, I try to post a blurb with a link to the full article on their page to drive the traffic to them because if they've done the work, then they deserve the original credit. That's how it should be done. So – Go check it out, The Hypocrisy of Sylvester Stallone. It'll bring you to, when you click on the bottom, it'll bring you to the, the there's a, a part of the article, but it'll bring you to the full article. They've got different videos and stuff in there and some pictures, which you need to read, and some documents and stuff. That's why I wanted to link it there. Go check it out. And I want you to hear what Sylvester Stallone had to say really quick about guns and the Second Amendment. Not that his opinion really means anything, but again, you have these movie stars that are, they're action stars, and people really respect what they say. So let's, let, let's, let's see what Sylvester Stallone had to say. Okay, let's see what Sly had to say. <clears throat> it, being the Second Amendment, has to be stopped, and someone really has to go on the line, a certain dauntless political figure, and say, "Quote: It's ending. It's over. All bets are off. It's not two hundred years ago. We don't need this anymore, and the rest of the world doesn't have it. Why should we?" End quote. Now, how about this? Quote, until America door to door takes every handgun, this is what you're going to have. It really is pathetic. We're living in the dark ages over there. End quote. Well, Mr. Stallone is a hypocrite because he received his concealed carry permit on November 30th, 2004. According to Freedom of Information Act, uh, rec- you know, public records, however they, they were able to, uh, to pull it out. All that stuff is uh, public records. So they were able to pull it out. He received his concealed carry permit on November 30th, 2004. Oh, I remember how it came out in an investigation. Uh, there, was, there was an investigation. I think it was a murder or a robbery or something happened in uh, – I think it was a murder. Uh, it's in the article, the, the full article. But there was an investigation and that's into the sheriff or something, and it came out that he had given a bunch of stars uh, permits to carry, <clears throat> and one of them was Sly Stallone. If I remember correctly, that's how, how it came out. So – the, the point is, he has a permit to carry, but he's telling you you shouldn't have guns and that the Second Amendment should be repealed, although he has a special permit to carry, so I guess he feels special, right? Now, how else is he hypocritical? Well, not only is he Rocky and was he a boxer, but he's also well known for being Rambo, okay? So that's in and it, in it, in it of itself being a hypocrite. But how about his past two releases? And wait, hold on, he's got a third new one coming out. But how about his past new two releases? The Expendables and The Expendables 2, okay? To quote my father, the reason I like this movie is because from the beginning, the, from the time the opening credits roll until the end, it's nonstop shooting and action. Because my dad likes those action, you know, movies like that. He likes that stuff, okay? That's like one of the genres he likes. He finds it entertaining. So when he wants to blow some steam off and just unplug, that's what he tunes into, right? Well, quote, unquote, to my very smart father who didn't even realize the profound statement he was making when he made it. Sylvester Stallone's movies, The Expendables and The Expendables 2, are shooting from the beginning of the film until the end of the film. And then this douchebag is going to have the balls to come on and say that they should get rid of the Second Amendment when he makes a movie and profits greatly from running around in the movie with guns and weapons, freely shooting and, and encouraging and pushing that idea and that type of uh, mentality and that type of, you know, machismo, we're American ex-special forces mercenaries and we fight in and we do what we want and yeah, we're American and the Constitution and raw, you know, badass was A, right? It's the kind of crap he's pushing. Rambo, I'm John J. Rambo. So it's okay for law enforcement and military to have weapons, but the Second Amendment, the citizens, should just lose their, 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 their right to carry guns. And people will be like, yeah, man, I agree with Sly Stallone. Yeah, I really wish 
somebody would invent a time machine and go back like with like Bill and Ted with the phone booth. Go back and go get the founding fathers, please. Someone please go get Jefferson and Washington and a few others. Please. Hamilton's a dick. Someone while you're there, kick him in the balls. Okay. And yeah, I'm being a little rough today. I don't care. It's Sunday and a little relaxed today. Somebody needs to go back though, seriously, and if we can invent a time machine, bring the founding fathers back. Okay, really. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. And and people will li- listen and and put this guy up on a pedestal for what he said. Of course, the people that'll be doing that'll be people pushing an agenda or MSNBC. So, like I said, people pushing an agenda or CNN. I'm waiting for somebody to report on this. I'm waiting for one of the the uh, the establishment media mouthpieces to talk about it. Screw Sly sliced alone, okay? Oh, and by the way, his newest movie is coming out on February 1st. You want to know what it's called? Bullet to the Head. I'll repeat that, just in case you can't catch the irony in him saying that you shouldn't have guns. The newest movie title that's coming out February 1st for good old Sly is Bullet to the Head. So I say, we boycott his movie. No, I mean, I don't go to movies anyway. Screw them. But Boycott his movie and see if you can organize like Second Amendment, pro Second Amendment protests outside the theaters if you want. And by the way, people, uh, on another note, people that love the Second Amendment and love freedom need to start getting get up and get out in the streets because all the anti gunners are getting out there. And even if it's only one or two thousand people getting out there, they're gonna, you know, you, the, the media will be like, there were thousands upon thousands, which probably means there was probably about two or three hundred of them out there. And they'll say it was thousands upon thousands, but if it was a pro-gun rally, there'd be fifteen or 20,000 people, and they'd be like, well, there were three people outside, and they, they won't even show pictures of the protest because it would totally debunk their claims. And then, of course, Facebook and the alternative media and Twitter and all the people sharing things on the social networking sites, and then the alternative media would, uh, would have different videos on YouTube and stuff showing differently, but I digress. People need to get out. And we need to show them. We need to, people need to get out and put out the message that guns are not the problem and this is an appeal to emotion. We need to debunk the arguments, people. Sit down and have these conversations with people. Okay? I'm serious. We need to have these conversations with our friends, our loved ones, our coworkers, we, anybody that's uneducated. In fact, if you want um, a copy of the, uh, the, the video of Leroy Pyle with semi-automatic versus fully automatic, go to federaljack.com backslash vids and look up educate yourself semi-auto versus fully auto and download it for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll catch you all tomorrow night. I love you all. The solutions to our problems are an inside job. I'm out of here. 